I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. I think you'll really enjoy our program today. Uh, Jake Bills has come down from North Utah, Northern mm. Utah, to come and share his story, and thanks for coming. And yeah, thanks for having sharing me. Sharing your story. Um, as we do often, just tell us where you were born and what's your little bit of about your background. <clears throat> well, I was born in uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Oh. And uh, I was adopted by my folks, and they picked me up when I was five days old. Wow. And I uh, grew up in Evanston up until about 1995, oh. where we moved down to the Ogden area. and. Yeah. Uh, I've been there pretty much ever since. Um, I've moved around the world a little bit, well, Alaska and Montana, and I've done some stuff like that. We just settled in. Yeah, settled in here. I love it here. Oh, good. The mountains are beautiful. And Now, are your folks, uh, the adopted folks, I guess, were they active uh, Mormons? They were, They were yeah. active LDS. My so. dad actually spent some time in the bishopric, Yeah. Um, which was pretty neat at the time for yeah. me. And, uh sure. Baptized and at eight, I guess. Well, I was yeah. baptized at eight. And mm -hmm. do you remember all your primary songs and all the, <laughs> the attended yeah. primary? Most of them I forgot now, but yeah. <laughs> I still But Sunday know school, now. and uh, yeah. did you ever take seminary? I did take seminary, yeah. uh, a little bit in high school. Yeah. Not a lot, but, Took some seminary. but I yeah. did take some seminary. Yeah. Um, I did participate in the church scouting programs and... Uh, did a lot of the the youth activities and yeah, and, just kind of uh, had a felt like you had a normal growing up of being a a young person in the church, I guess. Mm -hmm. huh? yeah. yeah. So uh, you get through high school, I guess, and what happens? Uh, well, I went went through high school, um, then I went into the military. Oh. Um, my activity. In the church was kind of up and down. Sometimes I'd be active, sometimes I wouldn't be, just kind of as I... Depend on who, where you were at and yeah. what your associates maybe... What I wanted to do, and, yeah. and I ended up in the Coast Guard, mm. and I spent some time in Alaska doing that, and wow. and that was during the time I would have gone on a mission had I gone on one. Um, but it, it was kind of interesting to me, too, because I ran into people that had gone on missions and had since kind of becoming active in the church and I actually at that point in time helped some people back that I had the, met yeah. come back into the church Ooh, and, wow. and so in a way for me at the time it felt like that was my mission Yeah, was for that. Help, helping them come back into the church. Yeah. You feel like you had a testimony then of the church of Joseph Smith and Book of Mormon? I did. I yeah. swore by it. I swore up until a couple of years ago that yeah. No matter what happened, even if I was inactive, that I I'd still would swear that it was the truth, that it was absolute. The only, and, only true church on the mm -hmm, earth. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I know In one comment you made to me earlier was trusting the leaders. Mm -hmm. You just had a faith and trust in the leaders. And I know President Hinckley was a prophet for a while, and you, we just trusted the, what they said, didn't mm -hmm. we? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love President Hinckley. And, yeah. uh, I mean, I... Regardless, I think a lot of the things they stood for, for were still good things, but yeah. 
it's just it amazes me at this point what kind of people can be misled it's just it's really interesting in that but i did love him um president monson i was never too sure about yeah but um we kind of had that same kind of a um, whether it was the difference between the two prophets or whatever it was but, sure. but you stayed active i mean you got married in the temple i did get married in the temple to my first wife yeah mm -hmm. and uh any problems come with that or had you had any questions or problems come up even on your coast guard time or um well in the any like questions? questions with the church yeah yeah um, anything that bothered you that you kind of like we say put on a shelf and one thing that always really bothered me was uh confessing confessing like my sins to another person that sinned oh that was kind of one of those things that i'm like well i don't understand that but then it was just uh I'll trust the leaders type of thing if that's what they want then that's what I'll do and yeah and you know I spent some time having church disciplines and stuff <laughs> like that I guess I was somewhat yeah. of a rebel and <laughs> and so I, I went through some of that but it, it always bothered me because I'm like you know what I I can just deal yeah. with this with God myself and you really sensed that huh? I did yeah I, and, I never I never even thought that, you know, I mm -hmm. just figured the church system was the right one and certainly being a bishop, I heard many confessions and Absolutely. I just figured that, you know, I prayed for inspiration and I never considered myself such a sinner that I wasn't able to do that. It's just a funny, mm -hmm. funny system, but you're right, how very intelligent people buy into this just wholeheartedly mm -hmm. and just trust others and so on. But nothing came when you went to the temple that wasn't... Uh, what did you think of that? Uh, it was intriguing, to yeah. say the least. It was, I, the one thing that there's always been a huge disconnect with me when it can when it comes to the temple and their and the ceremonies and things that they do in there. There was a huge disconnect with me because I was like, where does this line up with salvation? You know, where does this really? line up and it always confused me too because reading scripture you know jesus said i'm died for ever all your sins yet here we are here we are we have to still take all these steps and but he died for all our sins i don't that that didn't make sense to me well, and, you're a deeper thinker than i am because <laughs> i never even thought that yeah yeah that's amazing you know, it's uh, the biggest thing i think i got out of it was was I didn't I wasn't really able in the church to think freely um you mean as to far question as anything you mean or yeah like um like in the church it was just kind of this is what it is this is how it is this is what you read oh good. this is what okay. you do it, it never really gave me a chance to expand on my knowledge within different churches because anytime I thought about looking at different things because i had thought about hey you know maybe i'll go try out a lutheran church and just you, see what they're did, like huh? and yeah and i never really got the opportunity to do that because anytime i did you know somebody would tell me well it's not <laughs> a really good idea and yeah and stuff like that and interesting so. well so you just kind of go along in life what happens eventually to to make you look at things a little differently um it was there was a little bit of a chain of events that happened the first one was my current wife and i um we met some friends that are still great friends of ours yeah and uh our relationship with them was just uh you know they told us you can just believe what you want and we'll just believe what now we you're want. both and, lds and um, they're both our, and they're yeah. christians the cri friends Correct. are christian okay mm -hmm. and did they uh, invite you to church or no they really didn't they yeah. uh their approach to it was very respectful it was very okay. kind and they just said you know what if you're ever interested in knowing just let us know and we'll talk to you about it yeah and uh, i know that through some times we kind of had a, some conversations about the differences and yeah. and so forth and uh but we never really got too deep into it and all this time of course you're thinking well they would make good mormons Probably. I did have yeah. that thought. Yeah, <laughs> think, I'm, like, I'm going to bring them in too. Yeah, part of yeah. my mission. <laughs> yeah, it, that did cross my mind. It wasn't sure. too much. Yeah, thank goodness. But I yeah. did have a little bit of it, and 
and I'm glad I didn't pursue it. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, There's they're such great friends and great people. And yeah, I'll bet they're thrilled now. But yeah, yeah. Well, they were. So what so ha thrilled. what happened then? You um, well, as as time went on, we kind of just went about our relationship the way it was, and I like to watch a lot of music videos and stuff like that on YouTube. Yeah. So I was watching these videos, and I kept having this prompting come up, or suggestion, not prompting, but I know, suggestion. I on, on the right-hand yeah, side there, yeah. Yeah, they give you suggestions of videos to watch next and yeah. so forth. And I, I saw this one that it, the headline was something like, Ex-Mormon Bishop oh, Earl. Really? <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, and oh, uh, I was just like, something, and I kept seeing it, and I'm like, this guy probably got offended by something or yeah. or something like that. And that pro or that suggestion literally came up for months of me watching different videos and stuff like that. It would just, i keep seeing it there. That's, that's great. And, <laughs> yeah, I was just like, this is something else. And... And one day I was just like, you know what? What have I got to lose? Honestly, this guy's probably off his rocker. And yeah. I mean, those are the things that went through my head. So I decided to watch the video, and of course it was you, and oh and goodness. I was floored. I was literally just floored, and it, and it and things that didn't make sense to me started to make sense to me at that point. I'm just like, well, this answers some of these questions, you know, and, and it started making me question more things. And oh I, in the meantime, I've probably watched a thousand different videos of different <laughs> people that you've interviewed, different people that, uh, that have been in the church. I've also, I mean, I researched so much different stuff, watched videos to, you know, looked at different documents, everything I could to, uh, because at that point in my life, from the moment I watched that video of you, from that point in my life, I became a truth seeker. And and it was all about, I got to sort this stuff out and sort it out for me. And I got to match evidence with, you know, with, with what was fact, what was fictional. I had to yeah. match it all out. and. And uh, so I did a lot of that. I even searched into atheism. I mean, I did so many different things. Well, so many do that. Uh, mm -hmm. feel like, well, if the true church isn't the only true church, then, then what, you know? Exactly. Uh, did these Christian friends help you then? Did you talk to them about what you were... I did talk to them. They were yeah. very excited. <laughs> <laughs> they were very excited. They were... Um, they were really good about it and even at that point they still were like no pressure yeah. but you know we're we're happy to help you out as much as we can and they have they've always been a oh, great help to me and well obviously i'm thrilled to hear that i mm -hmm. uh, you know we that's one of the reasons we do the story and or do the interviews and and i had the opportunity to get i guess it was the 17 minutes was it what where i compared the book of mormon the changes in the book of mormon was that the one um the you? first video i watched yours was like over an hour so oh. it was a it was a pretty okay. long oh pretty long video of okay. yours um well, I actually just recently saw the quicker one. Oh, the so, 17 minute. Yeah, the 17 well, minute one. Was there something particular that struck you? I mean, it, it's, were you on a journey at that point, or you you were just listening to music videos? I, I mean, was just listening to music videos. You really videos. hadn't uh, questioned the church at all, or no? Even at that point, I hadn't really questioned anything other than you know the yeah. the questions I went through before. But even then, I had just accepted it, and so I got to. I got to the point to where I just, when I listened to your stuff, it just, it was like all these doors open and praise, angels came down. It was pretty cool. God. It was, yeah, just, it was amazing. Well, and I think it's all in God's timing because you mm -hmm. may have heard stuff before and it just didn't impact you, but this time it did and that's really neat. So did you share this with anybody in the church or the ward, your wife, for example? Well, I was pretty excited. I started, I sent my wife that video the moment. I'm like, you got to watch this video. It's it's insane. And, <laughs> and she's just, I think she watched it. And, and she's she's kind of where I'm at or where I was <laughs> at at that point where she's just not quite sure. And, yeah. and that's okay, you know. Yeah. But... Um, but for me, it was really exciting. 
Wow. And it was hard. Yeah. In some ways. In yeah. other ways, I'm like, holy, really challenge, cow, holy challenges. Cow, this is, yeah, it was challenging. Yeah. And uh, but it, in a lot of ways, it was such a huge relief. In what way? Um, my burdens. It was like, it was like, you know what? Now I see where Jesus works in my life. I did not quite understand. I mean, I kind of heard it because, you know, it's like, yeah, he, he died for us and did these things for us. Yeah, we always believe that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, but you hadn't understood grace. But I had never understood grace. In fact, I very rarely even heard the word. No, you just never do. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and even if you do, it's saved after all we can do. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and uh, that didn't make sense to me. I mean, I, I can understand God wanting us to you know, treat people good and, and do these kinds of things. But I didn't understand that, that our sins had already been taken care of. Yeah, I, I just that part didn't get to me. So, so I had just at that point in my life, honestly, I had just accepted that I was never going to be <laughs> celestial. Oh, of course. And uh, you know, maybe someday in the future, I'd try if I didn't yeah. die before then and have to settle with the lower kingdoms. And <laughs> <laughs> did it become more difficult to go to church? And listen to others bear testimony and that kind of thing. Did you? Honestly, from that, that point on, I really didn't attend. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, I just. Uh, so it was just. I like... wasn't super active to begin with um, at that point in my life. Yeah. Um, and so it really, I, I maybe only have attended a couple of times since mm -hmm. that point. Um, and. But I guess I'm, I'm kind of sensing in, in my experience was. I'm having a hard time listening to these people it was, because they yeah. don't really know. They say they know, but they mm -hmm. don't really know. And, and that became more difficult for me. Yeah, well, the fast and testimony meeting is the hardest part, the yeah. hardest ones for me because I watch it. And, well, my wife got into the series on television that was uh, uh, Leaving Polygamy or Escaping Polygamy. Mm. And it, it's a television series that takes place here in Utah, and it's these girls that help other people yeah. that are in the polygamy right. sect get out. And I remember watching some of these videos, and and there was videos of how they were in their in their meetings, in their yeah. sacrament meetings. And I was like, man, there's some remarkable similarities between <laughs> them. And and of course, it goes off a lot of the doctrine, sure. but sure. but it was like man on the watchtower kind of stuff and yeah. and so it was really intriguing to almost compare the two yeah because the mental game between the two right. is identical well it sounds to me like too your experience is as you start learning things and seeing things then doesn't the dominoes just kind of fall absolutely i mean it became all of a sudden joseph smith's polygamy comes into play and the book of abraham and the book of mormon changes and just mm -hmm. one thing after another nothing supports what you earlier believed was mm -hmm. true everything kind of followed so did you have a like what we call a born again moment did you what happened there? i did um it was during a time i was driving i was at work and i was just talking to god i learned how to you know have felt like you had a relationship with him i yeah. did yeah and so i started having that open communication and and i just started talking and i had heard some things about uh from sean mccraney yeah. i listened to him and yeah. i love that guy he's great yeah. you know yeah and uh so i was watching or listening to a lot of stuff he was talking about that and and he, he said, you know what? Don't trust anybody. Go directly to God and isn't, talk to him isn't about Isn't that amazing? It. Yeah. He's, he says, you don't have to trust me. Don't trust anybody you talk to. Trust God. Except God. Yeah. Go talk to God uh, and he'll reveal it all to you. He'll do it for you. And it's not going to be gray. It's not going to be, you know, maybe this area is okay. Maybe, you know, maybe you only have to go on faith on this. Right or go on faith on everything, which right. is where it seemed to be before. It's like, you know what, you can match your faith up with facts. There's facts right here, they're plain, they're black and white. Uh, there's, of course, questions that we don't know yet, but yeah. but there was, 
the questionability of it is like, you know what, now I have a source, a resource I can go to and actually look at this stuff and say, okay, you know, there's yeah. there's actual original writings of you know, things in the Bible. Had you understood that before as a Mormon? I never understood that. No, I mean, we carry the Bible around, mm -hmm. but we don't use it very much, do we? You know, mm -hmm. don't trust it and... No. Nope. Yeah, and there is there is manuscripts that support the... and the Dead Sea Scrolls and everything. Yeah, else. absolutely. So you're driving along and... Yeah, and talking I'm just God. talking to God, and uh, you know, I pulled over, and I just took some time to talk to God between me and Him, and, uh, you know, I just like Romans 10, you know, confess with your mouth yeah. that He's your Savior, and I did. And you just knew. And I just knew. Yeah. I mean, just it was just like Sean McCraney described it. He said, everything just changes for you. You become a new creature. Yeah, yeah. Your, your vision of things around you become different. And it did. It was just like that. And it was just incredible. And the burden, the guilt, the mm -hmm. hypocrisy just kind of all floats away. And it, it answers does. all the questions. It does. So mm -hmm. what, what, what does the Bible mean to you now? The Bible is the Word of God. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's the true Word of God, and it's something, too, that I, that I can go back to the original source and say, you know what, I, I mean, it's, it's interesting to me, too, because it's facts, solid facts. It yeah. has solid evidence that supports there's it. There's archaeology. There's archaeological yeah. evidence. There's, yeah. I mean, you, there's copies of the Old Testament. There's the originals of the New Testament. I mean, and it's just going through this, it's like, and the study of the Bible is totally different now because because now I, I listen to pastors talk about it and they say, well, in the Greek, this is what this means. Exactly. And, and yeah. I'm just like, I had never once heard anything like that before. And so that just gave the Bible a whole new meaning to yeah. me. And, and it's just, it, it became a nonfiction book to me. You know, as you're talking, it makes me think of how narrow Mormonism is mm -hmm. and the thinking that goes on. Like you were saying, you really didn't feel like you could ever look outside. Mm -hmm. you're, it just felt like you were kind of in a tunnel or something, and then all of a sudden it just opens up. I don't think mm -hmm. maybe people outside of Mormon that have never been Mormon can even appreciate what that feels like or what that narrow view of things is. We're just totally blinded, mm -hmm. aren't we? Minutes. Absolutely. Well, what what gets me is, and it's probably the biggest thing that bursts my bubble within it, is people within the church are always, that I've noticed, are about investigating. They investigate the cars they buy. They investigate the groceries they buy. They investigate, you know, if they the take house a, they buy. They, they take a vacation. They, yeah, yeah, they, they, they check go things. through, yeah. and they will not do the same thing. With when it comes to, I mean, they look at all these different sources on all these different things, but they will not do the same thing for something that, that their salvation depends upon. It's really upon. so important. And, and it's like, and, and I heard this saying through my investigation, and, and I live by it now. It says, the truth does not fear investigation. Yeah. No. Mind blown. I mean, it was... It was incredible because now I'm not afraid to look at anything, even our own stuff. Right. It does not bother me to look and investigate things inside Christianity. Christianity yeah. because everybody says, go investigate it. Go look at all the sources you can find. Don't don't trust me. Don't you know, look at what is yeah. real. How does your family, your folks, and I mean, do you do you approach them, I guess, and explain to them what happened or what's happened in your life and what I have. what was the reaction there? Um, my folks have always been really supportive. They've always been uh, great at saying, you know what, do your own thing. No, oh, really? they've always been great that way. Um, and it wasn't really any different with this. They just oh, said, good. you know what, that's great, good for you. I'm glad you found what you're looking for. Really. Um, and, and they've just been phenomenal that way. Mm. My, uh, I've had pretty in-depth conversations with my dad, and yeah. I still don't have him convinced, but maybe <laughs> through God will work on him. God will soften his heart. And, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I think he's, the last conversation I had with him about it was he was just more like, you know what, I'm just too old to make any changes in my life. <laughs> and it's like, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> someday, because I just wanted That's to not... send him some material. I'm like, yeah. no pressure, just... 
Yeah. And I was just going to send him an NIV Bible. And, and I still probably that. will. Um, Tell him to read it as a child, mm -hmm. as they say. And, exactly. Yeah. And have him start in the book of John like I do. I love the book of John. Yeah. But um, have him start there. And yeah. I think it would just open his open his mind, open his heart. But in due time, I think God will work on him. God will work on the people that I care about. And, yeah. and uh, hopefully they'll all come. Well, it's just such a journey that we're on, and uh, I, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Would you say anything, or want to say anything to your family, or? No, I love um, my family. I yeah. love people. I love everybody now. Um, and the biggest thing I think I could ever promote with anybody is that you need to seek the truth. You don't be afraid to investigate this stuff. If yeah. it is truth, then you're going to come back to it with your investigation. So, don't be afraid to look at it. Have you found that very few Mormons or LDS are even aware of the essays, for example, the, you know, the essays that are on LDS.org? I don't think have they you, have any idea. No. I, I've asked a number of them. They don't know about it, and the very few that seem to know have never looked. They, mm -hmm. well, I know what I know. I, I believe what I believe, so why do I need to look at anything. Yeah, Again, that narrow view of things, and they just don't have mm -hmm. that perspective. I guess Jesus has taken on a little different perspective for you. Yes, it's everything. <laughs> I mean, it's my entire salvation, my entire life is based on Jesus now, and I never understood the concept of God first until now. Yeah. You know, now I realize that when you really do put God first, and you really do understand His grace and the love that He has for you, that he came that and said, everything else just falls in place. Yeah. I mean, even if it's not financially or anything like that, that stuff is so minute in the real work in the real realm of things. Yeah. And that's huge for me. And, and there's I love such it. a freedom in that, mm -hmm. isn't it? The burden is not working your way like a little mouse or mm -hmm. something. You know, <laughs> it actually makes me want to be a better person. Yeah. It, it doesn't make me want to be a rebel anymore. <laughs> yeah, and I, th so. I don't think Mormons even understand that, mm -hmm. that the grace and that you want to be more Christ-like and, yeah. and love God and love your fellow man even more. And they can, they don't... And not judge. They don't realize, yeah. And not and judge. Not judge, but they don't realize that they can still have the same family values and the same values that they hold. Well, that was a revelation to me, mm -hmm. that Christians actually out there care for their kids and actually have <laughs> programs and, and want to live good lives. Yep. Well, our time's up, but I sure appreciate you coming and I spending your you. time, and it's, uh, it's a joy. And, and you can't even think of, of what it would take to go back. I mean, no. it would be impossible. Wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time on Ex-Mormon Files.